Hello friends, in this video we are going to discuss the previous year paper on electronic signs which has been conducted by NTA UGCNET on 13th December 2023. The paper consisted of paper 1 and paper 2. Paper 2 is electronic signs. In the part 1 video I am going to cover from question number 1 to question number 25. The remaining questions we shall discuss in next part. Moving on to the first question what they have given is for a 2 transistor model the values of alpha 1 and alpha 2 is given by See this question is from power electronics and they are speaking with respect to an SCR. In the case of SCR you will be having a PN PN nothing but it is a 4 layer device. It is a 4 layer device. How many terminals are there? You will be having a 3 terminals. What are the 3 terminals? You will be having anode, you will be having cathode and you will be having the gate terminal also. Now, this PNPN I can represent or I can split it as a PNP transistor and an NPN transistor. I am going to represent anode current, cathode current, nothing but I am going to speak with respect to emitter current, base current and collector current. See the base current of first transistor is collector current of the second transistor. Right? Now in this junction if I am writing the KCL what I am going to get the collector current plus gate current which is equals to the base current nothing but IB2. So we know that uh, the collector current IC equals to alpha times of IE plus ICBO but in the first transistor if I am applying so I am going to get IC1 which is equals to alpha 1 times of IE1 plus ICBO1. So what is the emitter current you are going to get it is a anode current so I am going to represent this IE1 as IA. Similarly, for the second transistor, if I am taking, I am going to get IC2 which is equal to alpha 2 times of what is the emitter current. Emitter current is nothing but the cathode current you are going to get plus ICBO2. So, we know that the emitter current which is equal to the emitter current which is equal to the collector current plus the base current. So, based on this, if I am writing, what I am going to get? the anode current which is equal to the collector current nothing but the first transistor collector current plus base current is what the collector current of the second transistor. So if I am substituting what I am going to get IA equals to alpha 1 times of IA plus ICBO1 plus alpha 2 times of IK so on like this you are going to get. Now what I am going to do is on rearranging on rearranging what I am going to get is IA which is equal to alpha 2 times of IG plus ICBO1 plus ICBO2 whole divided by 1 minus of alpha 1 plus alpha 2. So based on this uh, if I am uh, sketching a graph with respect to the emitter current versus alpha what I am going to get is this alpha 1 and alpha 2 is going to approach to in unity but not equals to an unity. Say suppose this alpha 1 and alpha 2 if it is equals to 1 then what I am going to get is 1 minus 1 nothing but 0 I am going to get anything divided by 0 I am going to get infinity. Infinite anode current I am going to get practically not possible. So the values of alpha 1 and alpha 2 can reach up to 1 but not equals to 1. So the suitable option that is going to follow is option B is correct nothing but less than 1. In the second question what they have given is the consider the following statements when two signed numbers when two signed numbers are added an overflow is detected from the carry into the MSB bit position they are telling so it is wrong an overflow does not occur if the two numbers added are both negative so overflow is nothing but it is a conceptual overflow conceptual overflow chances is say suppose if you are adding a positive number with a positive number you are going to chances is there that overflow may occur similarly if you are adding two negative numbers overflow may occur but say suppose if you are adding a positive number with a negative number the obtained result is within the limits so at that time you will not be getting a overflow so an overflow does not occur they are telling so an overflow does not occur if the two numbers added both are negative it may occur if the carry into the sign bit position and carry out of the 
uh, sign bit position if they are not equal an overflow condition is produced nothing but carry into is not equals to carry out then what i'm going to get overflow is a set to one overflow is a set to one correct right next a fourth option what they have given is a full ladder is a logic circuit with uh, three inputs with three inputs and two outputs the circuit add three bits at a time giving a sum and a carry output this is correct so c and d is going to follow which option is correct option d is going to follow see in the first option what they have given is when two signal numbers are added so it is a sign numbers are added so they have made a mistake and even in the third op fourth option also with the three inputs t h r e e three inputs okay so make a minor correction and then you have to answer it so these kind of things you can you can't ask for a grace marks third question a device used to convert a non electrical quantity to electrical quantity transformer it is a wrong option transformer it is going to convert ac to ac but frequency is maintained constant right transducer is the best option so transducer transducer is a one which is going to convert non electrical quantity to electrical quantity so you'll be having a mechanical transducer electrical transducer and electronic transducer already i made a detailed video on it so it's a revision video if you have not gone through this video uh, the links i am going to give in the description also you can click on the i button inverter it is a dc to ac inverter it is a dc to ac so the corresponding option that is going to follow is option c is correct in the fourth question what they have given is a match a list 1 with a list 2 they have to so mod fet is what a two dimensional electron gas mosfet anyway you are familiar solar cell you are very much familiar so based on this you will be getting the correct answer see mosfet is what a pn junction placed back to back solar cell is what a fill factor so for c it is a 2 for b it is 3 so directly you can tell option a is going to follow option a is going to follow jfet it is a voltage controlled resistor option a is correct in the fifth question what they are telling is match a list 1 with list 2 given an instruction what kind of addressing mode it is we have to identify move bx comma ax it is what a register addressing mode why it is register addressing mode means because uh, both of the operands are uh, register so for a it is a 3 for a it is a 3 next look at the things for d it is 2 for d it is 2 right for d it is 2 now move ax comma within the braces what they have given is a bx so it is what a register relative addressing it is what a register relative addressing option b is going to follow option b is going to follow right next move ax comma bx within the braces 50h if i am writing so it is what a a uh, register indirect addressing mode register indirect addressing mode so directly we are not in a position to calculate the address in the sixth question what they have mentioned is in the following 8051 assembly level language program they have given the instruction that is uh, move a comma 58h so uh, this 58 in uh, hexadecimal is equal to dash in a decimal so it is a uh, 5 into 16 power 1 plus 8 into 16 power 0 what is a 16 5 is 80 80 plus 8 is how much 88 you are going to get similarly 78 h you have to take 78 h means what the equivalent is 7 into 16 plus 8 into 1 8 into 16 power 0 means what 1 so the equivalent value you are going to get is 120 the equivalent value is 120 So next in section, what they are executing is a mul followed by a b. Nothing but you have to perform 88 times 120. So when you are doing it in a decimal, the equivalent value is 10560 in a decimal. But again, factor kind of thing. If you are going in the case of hexadecimal, it is a 2940 h in hexadecimal. So 2940. 
none of the options are matching so a is wrong b is wrong all the options are wrong you can go for grace marks in the seventh question what they are given is consider the following statements regarding registers and latches so in the first option what they are given is uh, registers are made up of edge trigger flip flops whereas lats are made up of level trigger flip flop so this option is correct in the second option what they are given is uh, registers are temporary storage devices whereas uh, latches are permanent storage devices they are given so it is a wrong option in the third option what they are given is a latch employs cross coupled feedback connection yes it is going to employ cross coupled feedback connection so c option is also correct whereas the last option what they are telling is a register stores a binary word whereas latches does not they are telling so a register is a storage element it can uh, store one bit of information two bit of information three bit four bit so based on number of flip flops that we are going to use so register memory is going to vary so d option is also wrong so a and c is going to follow nothing but option 2 is correct nothing but option 2 is correct in the eighth question what they have given is in the 8051 microcontroller a call nothing but you will be having several variants of call absolute call and uh, l call s call like this you will be having several variants this instruction has the following interpretation it is a two byte instruction they have specified yes it is a two byte instruction but it is not a three byte instruction in the, in the third option what they have given is that target address of the subroutine must be within 2 kb within 2 kb yes it should be within 2 kb there is no difference between a call and l call they are telling it is wrong in the fourth up in the fifth option what they are given is the target address can be anywhere within a 64 bytes yes it can be anywhere between or within the 64 kilobytes of memory so a c e is going to follow nothing but option b is correct nothing but option b is correct look at the ninth question this ninth question is based on k map here they have uh, explicitly mentioned we have to find the minimal sum of product terms nothing but sop and one more in the what they are given is a summation m summation m means what it is sop pi m if they are specified means it is a, the literals what they have given is a pos now maximum value is a 15 nothing but it is a four variable k map it is a four variable k map variables anything and everything you can take like this if you are thinking it is wrong already they have specified the variables what is the variables they have considered they have considered to be a b c d if they have not given you take p q r s or w x y z it's up to your wish but they have given the variables so it is a b c d let me write the values also and if you want to write the cell numbers, please write the cell numbers also. Orally, I will tell you if you want, you can make a note of it. 0, 1, 3, 2, 4, 5, 7, 6, then 8, 9, 11, 10, then it is 12, 13, 15, 14. Like this, you are going to get. Next, 0, 2, 3, 6, 7. So, it is 0, 0, then 0, 1, 2, 2, 3, 4, 5, then here it is a 6 and 7. Next, summation D, nothing but don't cares of, don't cares what, which and all they are telling means it is a 8th cell is a don't care, 8, 9, 10th cell is a don't care, 11th cell is a don't care, 12, 13, 14 and then 15, 15th cell is a don't care. Uh, rest of the values they have not specified, so you have to take it as 0. For simplicity point of view, I will not be taking 0, that's it. Now look at the things. Uh, these uh, four I am going to group and it is going to be a nibble. What is the equivalent value means? On the row side which is uh, not varying means A is not varying but the value of A is uh, 0 so it is A bar. Similarly column if I am taking C is uh, not at all varying C is 1 so it is A bar C. A bar C. Next look at the things. Outer four uh, uh, literals if I am taking then what is the grouping I am going to get what is the grouping I am going to get so on the row wise I am going to get a B which is a complement 
and on the column also I'm going to get the D which is a complement so a bar C plus B bar D bar a bar C plus B bar D bar nothing but option 4 is going to follow option 4 or option D is going to follow tenth question see this question is based on RC phase shift oscillator so for a FET based phase shift oscillator what could be the value of capacitance they are asking provided frequency is 1 kilohertz a resistance is a 20 kilo ohms we know that in the case of RC phase shift oscillator F is given by 0 0.065 divided by RC they have specified the values of F and C 0 0.065 or for simplicity point of view if you want to take you can take the or you can rewrite it as 65 65 milli divided by the value of R is a 20 20 into 10 power 3 into frequency value is what 1 into 10 power 3 you are going to get so what I have done is C and F have interchanged that's it 0 0.065 divided by R times of F now look at the things 65 divided by divided by 20 65 divided by 20 into 10 power minus 3 is already there and 10 power 6 if I am sending it to the numerator it will be 10 power minus 6 and one more 3 is there so collectively I am going to get 10 power minus 9 so what is the value 65 divided by 20 is 3.25 3.25 nanofarad 3.25 nanofarad option d correct in the 11th question what they are telling is again go for match the following we know that in the case of voltage series uh, negative feedback you will be having the highest input impedance nothing but with the feedback it will be without into 1 plus a beta where a is the forward path gain b is the feedback factor Similarly, in the case of voltage shunt feedback, in the case of voltage shunt feedback, what is the thing you are going to get? In the case of voltage shunt feedback, Z0 F which is equals to Z0 divided by 1 plus A beta. Z0 divided by 1 plus A beta you are going to get. So, see for B option, all the things are same. All the things are same. So, the option that is uh, left for you is option A or option D. Option A or option D. In the 12th question, what they have specified is in the linear region of operation. See, in the yesterday's video, I uploaded fast track revision video on CMOS. There, I have specified a linear region. It is also referred as what non saturated region, or it is also called as what ohmic region or it is also referred as what triode region see there are specified linear region each and every every person can relate but if they would have specified ohmic region or triode region then things would have been a bit complicated in the case of a linear region in the case of linear region what is the current expression you are going to get the ids value which is equals to mu n times of c ox into w by l into what are you going to get vgs minus vth into vds minus vds square divided by 2 vds square divided by 2 none of the options are matching but you have to choose the best out of it you have to choose the best out of it now look at the things carefully say suppose vdh vds is a smaller quantity Say suppose if uh, VDS is uh, less uh, or comparatively less when compared to VGS minus VTH. Then what is the term you are going to get means this VDS square by 2 you are going to neglect. You are going to neglect. So the remaining value will be mu n times of C ox into W by L into VGS minus VTH into VDS you are going to get. Into VDS you are going to get. Correct. Now, in the first option, it is not a Z printing mistake, it is a 2. It is 2. So, VDS, you try to take it outside, what you are going to get is uh, option A is also correct. A and B is going to follow. Nothing but first one. Right? 
right next say suppose if they would have specified a saturation region then option c would have followed in the first option and in the second option if they are telling say suppose if you are con if you want to consider the channel length modulation into 1 plus lambda times of vds this one term you have to remember so for the 12th one option a is going to follow in the 13th question what they have specified is for the circuit shown below which are the correct two equations of mess current so look at the things look at the things there is a voltage rise and there is a voltage drop there is a voltage drop there is a voltage drop so like this you have to write the equation so the for the for the first i1 for the first mess if i am writing so what i am going to get plus 150 minus 3 times of i1 minus 4 times of i1 minus i3 i1 is flowing from left to right but i3 is flowing from right to left and again minus 100 minus 5 times of i1 is flowing from top to bottom but i3 is flowing from bottom to top so it is i3 minus i2 minus 74 which is equals to 0 minus 74 which is equals to 0 you rearrange nothing but you send all this term on the right side constant let it be on the left side only so you, what you're going to get is a minus 24 which is equals to 12 times of i1 minus 5 times of i2 minus 4 times of i3 right nothing but first option right so this first option is correct in the second option say suppose look at the things kvl for i2 loop if i am taking kvl for i2 loop if i am taking it is a it is a plus 74 minus 5 times of i2 plus 5 times of i1 minus 6 times of i2 plus 6 times of i3 plus 15 minus 7 times of i2 plus 23 which is equals to 0 so upon rearranging what i am going to get 5 times of i1 5 times of i1 minus 18 times of i2 plus 6 times of i3 which is equals to minus 112 minus 112 so e option is wrong e option is wrong next kvl for i3 if i am taking what i am going to get what i am going to get minus 15 minus 6 times of i3 minus i2 plus 100 minus 4 times of i3 minus i1 minus 8 times of i3 minus 191 which is equals to 0 what i am going to get minus 15 uh, sorry uh, let me uh, rearrange each and everything so what i am going to get is what i am going to get is upon rearranging i am going to get a minus 4 times of i1 minus 6 times of i2 plus 18 times of i3 which is equals to minus 106 c is also correct so a and c is going to follow so a and c which is going to follow means option c is correct option c is correct so you are going to write the mess equation uh, negative to positive it is raised so i am considering it as positive the other case i am going to consider it as negative and then i am going to solve 14th question what they have specified is the disadvantages of coaxial cable it supports higher bandwidth when compared to twisted pair cable it is wrong so it is a lightweight yes it is a lightweight next uh, relatively expensive when compared to the twisted pair cable wrong emi resistance yes uh, does not uh, vary at a high frequency does not vary at high frequency it is also true so the option that is going to follow is the option that is going to follow is bde nothing but option c is going to follow for the 14th question option c is correct in the 15th question what they have specified is we have to write the transfer function for the given signal flow graph see forward path how many forward paths are there the first forward path is this one i'm going to take nothing but a g1 times of g2 the next forward path is see the loop gain is one 
1 multiplied by g2. So, it is g2 plus 1 multiplied by 1, right. So, it is 1 plus uh, g1 g2 plus uh, g2. So, the corresponding option that is going to follow is option D is correct. Such a simple question they have given. In the next question, what they have specified is choose the most appropriate answer from the options given below. White noise. This white noise is also referred as what Johnson noise. This white noise is also referred as what Johnson noise. Now, in the case of white noise, in the case of white noise, amplitude is fixed. Amplitude is fixed and the noise pattern is uniform and the noise pattern is uniform, right. So, for A it is a 4 and for B it will be 3 only, for B it will be 3 only. Next, in the case of modulation, in the case of modulation, it reduces the antenna height. Need for modulation if you are reading, then one of the need is to reduce antenna height. Then power in the DSBSC is uh, PC into M square divided by 2. Nothing but look at the things. The total power which is equals to PC into 1 plus M square by 2. 1 plus M square divided by 2. So you will be getting the carrier power and you will be getting the carrier power multiplied by modulation index. But in the case of DSBSC, what you are going to get? Or what you're going to do you're going to suppress the carrier so once you are suppressing the carrier the remaining term that is left is what pc into m square divided by 2 pc into m square divided by 2 for so for d it is a 2 for d it is 2 option a is going to follow option a is going to follow correct next in the 17th question again uh, straight away they are asking the question on uh, analog communication the modulation index of an AM wave is given by, we know that M equals to V max minus V min divided by V max plus V min divided by 2. This is one thing, uh, one more thing is there, that is a V max plus V min whole divided by 2. Uh, the carrier amplitude you are going to represent something like this, right. Option C is going to follow. In the 18th question, what they have specified is, for a wave motion in a perfect dielectric, the following conditions are given. The material is lossless. Yes, the material should be lossless. Condition is what? RC equals to LG. Distortionless. Right? Next, the material is lossy. No. The medium is isotropic. Yes. The medium is non-homogeneous. It is wrong. So, when it is non-homogeneous, definitely it should be an homogeneous one. So, A, C, E should follow. Nothing but option. First option is going to follow. 19th question, uh, they have given the T parameter. If you want, you represent in terms of a Z parameter and then you try to solve, it will be very much easy for you. See, uh, this uh, 4 ohm and 4 ohm, the equivalent value is 8 ohm. Why? It is connected in series. Now, you will be having the 2 ohm resistor followed by 10 ohm followed by 8 ohm. So, here it, here it is 2 ohm, 8 ohm and 8 ohm. Again, you will be having 10 ohm and 20 ohm. Now, one thing what you are going to do is we are going to convert this delta network to a star network and then we are going to solve such that we will be getting a T network. Solving will be very much easy for us, right? Now, say suppose uh, this uh, resistance I am going to call it as Ra, this resistance I am going to call it as Rb, this resistance I am going to call it as Rc. Now, what is the value of Ra? Ra is nothing but 8 multiplied by 10 whole divided by 8 plus 10 plus 20, 8 plus 10 plus 20, 80 divided by 38 you are going to get, 80 divided by 38. What is the value? 2.1 you are going to get. Similarly, what is the value of Rb? Rb is touching these two resistance, nothing but what? 20 multiplied by 8 whole divided by total resistance is how much 38 so what is the value of rb you are going to get which is a 4.2 ohms similarly what is the value of rc it is a 10 multiplied by 20 whole divided by 38 
200 divided by 38 you are going to get 5.2 ohms 5.2 ohms right now look at the things here you are having 2 ohm for this you are going to connect another 2.1 ohm and here you will be having 4.1 ohm for this you are going to connect 8 ohm for this you are going to connect 8 ohm now one more uh, resistor value is how much this resistance value is 5.2 5.2 now what is the equivalent of it it is a 4.10 what is the equivalent of it 12.10 now in a matrix if i want to specify in a matrix if i want to specify the z parameter so it is a z11 so 4.1 plus 5.2 which will be 9.3 similarly z12 will be 5.2 Z21 will be 5.2. Z22 will be 12.1 plus 5.2. You are going to get a 17.3. You are going to get a 17.3. So Z11 is a 9.3. Like this you are going to get. Then write the equation. Nothing but V1 equals to Z11 I1 plus Z12 I2. Next V2 equals to Z21 I1 plus Z22 I2. See the equivalent T parameter they have asked. So in the case of T parameter V1 which is equal to A times of V2 minus B times of I2. B times of I2. Similarly I1 equals to C times of V2 minus D times of I2. If you are knowing the conversion well and good. If you are not knowing don't worry it is one minute of job that's it. Call this as equation 1, 2, this one as 4 and the last one as equation 4. So you have to rearrange this 1 and 2 such that you are going to represent in terms of 3 and 4. So when you try to write what you are going to get A value is 1.78 and the B value is 25.92 and the C value is 0.195. D value you are going to get a 3.34 3.34 which option it is following means a, like close option is option A only option A is going to follow option is not following option C also wrong option D also wrong so in this how I have solved is uh, directly I have made use of uh, conversion to Z parameters two T networks are connected in a cascade equivalent value if you are knowing straight away you will be getting the answer one minute of job in the 20th question what they have specified is the peak carrier voltage is 150 volts they have specified vc the carrier voltage to be 150 volts if the resistor r is supposed to be 200 ohms and the modulation index of mu is 0.5 what is the total power in the case of am See the total power in the case of EM is specified as PT which is equals to PC into 1 plus mu square divided by 2 for sinusoidal right next what is the value of PC it is a amplitude divided by resistance now what is PC AC divided by root 2 the whole square whole divided by R so you're going to get AC square divided by 2 R into 1 plus uh, mu square divided by 2 upon substitute you if you are solving you are going to get a 63.28 watts option c is going to follow in the 21st question again noise margin already have discussed in the uh, cmos revision video if you have not gone through that video links are given in the description also you can click on the i button so there have specified by considering a uh, two uh, cmos uh, transistors connected in cascade you are going to get a voh and this will be VIH and this will be VIL and this one will be VOL. This is a nice margin low. This is a nice margin high. So VOH is a maximum output high level voltage. VOH is a maximum output high level voltage. Yes, this is correct. Next, next it should be VIH. So this should be first this should this should be second followed by you'll be having vil at last you're going to get vol nothing but which option option b is going to follow 
the minimum uh, noise that is allowed or the minimum fluctuation that is being allowed so it is referred as noise margin see in the uh, like fabrication you will be having crystalline and non crystalline two variants are there one is annealing and the second one is uh, quenching see in the case of quenching it is a uh, fast cooling in the case of annealing it is a uh, slow cooling so if you are doing annealing what you are going to get is crystal restoration is possible so for a it is a 4 so for a it is 4 right next the next one is a c it is a scaling it is a scaling see for the second one a scaling means what you are going to incorporate more and more transistor nothing but package density you are going to achieve ion implantation it is a doping and oxidation is a isolation oxidation is isolation so based on this if i am solving option d is going to follow another three questions are there let us solve it uh, y equals to ab plus cd if you want to realize with the help of nand gates how many nand gates are required they are asking right so y equals to ab plus cd what i'm going to do is i'm going to apply double complement such that its value is not changing a b the bar into c d the bar whole bar so we know that x plus y the whole bar which is equal to x bar into y complement so a b the whole bar in order to realize a b the whole bar one nand gate is required a b the whole bar if you want to realize one nand gate is required similarly c d the whole bar if you want to realize one more nand gate is required club put together one more nand gate is required that's it club put together one more nand gate is required right so the output of this one will be a b the bar the output of this one will be c d the bar so here it is a b the bar into c d the complement whole complement so this one you can call it as y so how many minimum number of nand gates are required means so three is the minimum number you can make use of four five six seven that's the maximum like upper limit but the lower limit is a uh, 3 in number so option b is going to follow 24th question arrange arrange in an ascending order or from left to right they are telling that's it so the fm transmitters have the following blocks as per the following uh, correct sequence they have specified crystal structure crystal structure will be at the starting point next you will be having next uh, you will be having audio source or phase modulator audio source or phase modulator uh, next you will be having a frequency multiplier next you will be having the power amplifier final stage will be what antenna transmitting antenna this is at the transmitter end receiving end first one itself is an antenna receiving end first one itself is an antenna right so this is one into what we can follow so b is the last option right antenna is placed at the last it is correct so the corresponding option that is going to follow is option d is correct option d is correct last question till now if you are not like this video please give it a big thumbs up also share this video with your friends in this uh, 25th question they have asked with respect to a to d converters the dual slope a to d converter is the most preferred a to d converter in the digital multimeter true in the case of digital multimeter we are going to specify or we are going to make use of dual slope a to d converter even though the conversion speed is more but why we are going to make use is it is having high accuracy and it is going to suppress the hum effect it is going to overcome the hum effect so a reason is uh, providing uh, the best explanation for assertion so both uh, assertion and reasoning are correct and r is giving the correct explanation for assertion so option a is going to follow so friends in this video we have discussed from question number one to question number 25 the remaining questions i'm going to discuss in the next part of the video till now if you have followed with the solution video please give it a big thumbs up also share this video with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to my channel craving Gyan. all the best for exams thank you do well in the exams